What's the shortest amount of time you've written a script? I did a 36 hour fade in to the end for Emmett and Furla Films um, project called Bad News that I wrote for them. And I did it in, I did it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday without sleep. No drugs, hmm. without sleep. And I crashed Thursday at some point. I physically collapsed in my condo and I woke up at some point Friday, printed it out, called Emmett and Furla, drove it to them at the Warner lot and they optioned it. They called me Monday, said, we love it. It's exactly what we need. We want it. That was, that was three days nonstop. Did the, the, the lack of sleep help you get into a mindset? Was it some type of a sci-fi fantasy? No, no, no. It was an action film. It was, I knew the story I wanted to tell. And Emmett and Furler were friends. We had done a film or two with them. And they were buying. They were working with people at the time that I worked with in the past. They were working with Avi Lerner and uh, Cassian Elways and Mark Rifkin and some of those guys from the late 90s that I had worked with that were just cranking out these 10 to $20 million action movies. So I knew what they wanted. And they were, they were optioning scripts and they were paying to do it. And these guys, I pitched George on it over the phone and he said, oh yeah, that sounds cool. Get me a script. And this was like on Tuesday, I hung up the phone. It was like three o'clock in the afternoon. I just started writing. I started writing and I, I collapsed at some point Thursday and realized that I wrote the end. And uh, Did you wake up and like the room was spinning or what happened? Did someone find you? <laughs> <laughs> I was living alone at the time. It was after my first, uh, my first divorce. So I was back living alone. Uh, you know how us bachelors, when we find our way back to bachelorhood, usually live. I, I, you know, I, it was crazy. It was just, I remember that time very vividly. And I remember writing it Tuesday afternoon, collapsing at some point Thursday. And you know, every when you wake up Friday, everything's still a blur. And I just remember hitting print. There was 96 pages and I just hit print. I punched hold them, put a brad in them, called their office to make sure Dal was their guy at the time who was head of, of development. And I said, Dal, it's Shane, I'm coming. Will you give me a pass? He goes, yeah, 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 we're waiting for you, dude. Drove onto the Warner lot, gave it to Dal and said, enjoy. And George called me, I think Monday or Tuesday and said, yeah, dude, you got a deal, this is great. <laughs> I, I will say George has better taste than that. This was 25 years ago. But yeah, that was the fastest script I ever wrote. Wow. Yeah. A lot of coffee? Oh, yeah. Crown and coffee. Okay. I don't know why. Crown Royal and coffee. Oh, wow. I don't know how. An empty stomach. Oh, wow. Yeah. You got to stay awake. Wow. And the little purple bag. Yeah. Crown probably Royal. smoked yeah. a lot, too. Sm oh, I went through a phase where I smoked a lot. I think oh, I probably wow. went through about 19 packs of cigarettes that week. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Thank God I'm vegan now. I'm making up, you know, <laughs> trying to take care of myself now that I'm old. <laughs> that's, that's just quite an image. I can I can almost see it. Yeah. I can tell you another story similar. Okay. Yeah. Please. I tell I tell you another funny story similar. We did no code of conduct uh, for for Dimension, which was Merrimax. Um, it was a twelve million dollar film we shot. We had a green light on a script. Charlie Sheen starred in it, and we had written it. They didn't want to tell that story, so they had brought two other writers on. A couple of great guys, Ed Masterson and Bill Gukwa. Um, really cool guys. We ended up becoming very good friends for a long time. Actually, one of them bought a car from me. And um, we got to Phoenix, and the director and Charlie read the script, and they go, what the, what the hell is this? And I said, I don't know, that's what they sent. They go, well, we start shooting in 48 hours. Get your laptop, fade in. So we rewrote the script in Arizona two days before we shot from page one and just about page one rewrite. That was another all same time of my life. It was within give or take a few years. So I was still able to do that. And how does that work with the original credit? Who cares? We're just a bunch of dumb people making movies. You know, I mean, they paid, they paid us. We were producing the film. They paid the writers. It was like they had a deal with the writers anyway. So those, it was like, we wrote the film, Charlie, Brett Michaels and I wrote the script, and then they agreed to make the movie. We went to Phoenix to make the movie, and then somebody got in the mix and said, that's not the script we want to make, and hired two writers, didn't tell us anything about it, and just sent us a script. The guys never came out to Arizona. They were just two guys in LA that were told to rewrite a script that they weren't happy with because it was originally written for LA, and then they sent us to Phoenix for a 30% tax credit. 
So we get there and it's just the domino effect. You change the scripts, like what the hell is this? This isn't what we, you know, Charlie that's not why I'm here. I didn't agree to do this. And it was our company, Charlie, Brett and I had a company. So it was like, yeah, and they just said, well, come on Dynamo and get some Jolt Cola or, you know, get some coffee and fire it up, let's go. And we did a, we did a 48 hour, two days before we wrote, or we wrote the whole script and they, I don't think they ever knew it. So what was, what was our 47 like? Hour 47, I remember being in the Homestead Village. They hadn't set us up in our homes yet. They gave us homes. It was a you know, $12 million film in Phoenix in the 90s. That's a lot of money. They had us in a Homestead Village and we each had our own unit. And I remember being in Brett's at his cabinet. I probably, I probably smoked three packs of cigarettes a day and just drank coffee. It was nuts. And then there was a Kenny Rogers Roasters that, that would deliver right at the end. It was like that, that episode of Seinfeld. And I was like just living on Kenny Rogers Roasters for like two weeks that we were there. And those last 48 hours we went through like two buckets of chicken. It was brutal. It was brutal. It smelled in there. And then I had a day and a half. And I remember Joe Lando from Dr. Quinn was co-starring in it. He was our bad guy. And he was a dear friend. He still is. And I remember going to my room and collapsing. And you know the sound of a hotel phone ringing, that loud chirp? It woke me up about 18 hours later. And have you ever woken up from a sleep so deep that you feel like you know you got punched by Mike Tyson and you just, you're incoherent? I remember the phone ringing, waking up, and literally I couldn't see. My eyes were open and I was, I was like Mike Tyson on his hands and knees when he got knocked out and he was reaching. Remember when he was looking for his mouthpiece? That was me looking for the phone. I answered it. I had the upside down parts of my ear. I was like, ah, hello? And Joe's like, Shane, it's Joe. I was like, yeah. And, and he, to this day, he still makes fun of me. Why I know the story. And he goes, dude, are you okay? And, like, Here's your back. and he goes, I think I caught you sleeping or something. I'm going to call you back. And I remember it woke me up and I remember I had to call him back and I couldn't find him and I was worried something was wrong. But yeah, that's that's what that was like. We started shooting, I think, the next morning at 5 a.m. With the script that the three of you had, had written. Yeah, and then the director decided at 5 a.m. he wanted to be in the movie. And he wasn't written in the movie and turned to me and said, why don't you direct the opening scene? I'm going to be in this. So that was my first directing job, really, without oh, getting wow. a job. So I, I shot the opening scene of No Code, yeah. The director decided to be in it. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>